Hi. I'm like my entire vibe, like body vibrating. I would love to practice feeling good about my life because I notice. So, say when I when I'm here, it's very easy to focus on the good things. It's very easy, and then. When I go home, the tendency is to. I think what when you were talking about the finding mutuality with other people, and I have a lot of folks that I love who are. It's sort of logical that when there are a lot of conditions that feel good, to feel gooder, and when there are conditions that don't feel so good, to feel not so good. That's sort of logical, but what's taking place within you, as a result of this conversation, is that. We're asking that even under these conditions, you have an awareness of the thoughts that you're thinking and the satisfaction factor of the thoughts. A thought really isn't a condition. A thought is unconditional. Now, it can be a thought about a condition. We'll give you that, but we're just asking you to follow this line of reasoning just a little bit because, yes, of course, good conditions are easy to look at and cause me to feel good, and bad conditions are easy to look at and seemingly to cause me to feel bad. But if I've practiced feeling satisfied, then I'm more likely to find satisfaction in both good and not so good conditions because I'm doing a better job of catching them in the early subtle stages. Hear the reasoning in this: a condition is a thought that has been thought upon long enough that it is matured into something that is tangible that you can hear and smell and see and taste and touch, and those realities, those manifestations, are. More difficult to choose around. There's something so real about a manifestation that it's more likely to give your attention and evoke from you your judgment. You see what we're getting at? Where if you've practiced feeling for the sake of feeling, and you've practiced that in the realm of less manifested things, both good. And bad, or wanted and unwanted. Now you're more in the driver's seat. Does that make sense to you? I can find more satisfaction. So during a voyage like this, where you are doing your best to find satisfaction, what you begin to notice is that your satisfaction is not so contingent upon conditions. And if that happens to you, oh, a big thing has happened to you. When you find a way to be less Conditional about the way you feel, you're home free, because then you can find satisfaction under any and all conditions, and that satisfaction can grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And we're talking about within 30 seconds or 60 seconds or 90 seconds or a minute or two or five or ten. We're talking about in a really short period of time, you can garner enough momentum that your invincibility will follow you wherever you go. And people who are accustomed to yanking your chain or pushing your buzzer, who are used to sort of getting a rise out of you, find you less reactive, because you're no longer reacting to conditions because the momentum didn't get strong enough to evoke a reaction. The negative momentum didn't get strong enough to evoke a reaction. Instead, you're surprisingly delightful. The positive momentum gets going enough to evoke a reaction. The sunrise is so beautiful to you. What are you on? The sunset is so beautiful to you. Ah, Esther sits in front of a meal and she will announce to her family, "This is the best salad I have ever eaten." And her grandchildren look at her like, "Really, grandmother? You say that? You know, you say that every time." Well, every time it's true. <laughs> Every time it's true. It's true. It's true this time because the whole of me is eating this salad. Do you know what it's like to eat with your inner being? Your inner being is so full of the ability to savor. When you eat with your inner being, it tastes way better. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so you're saying here, where it's easy, keep being really intentional about the choosing, and then. It'll、we sort of said that, but we sort of said、places. that. We for sure did say that, but we said something else too. Okay, I think I missed the something well, else. Well, here where it's easy, it will be easier for you to be less conditional. You see, if we say let's go on a cruise where all of the conditions are wonderful, we have given you no real value 
We've just given you an opportunity to have knee jerk responses to better conditions. And you've gained nothing really, because you're still conditional. And you live in a world with lots of conditions. Your media and your televisions bring you so many conditions to which you have knee jerk responses. But if you have found a way to find satisfaction apart from conditions, even when the conditions are good ones, then you will be in a better place to find satisfaction even when there are more not so good conditions surrounding you. Does that make sense? It may sound a little tricky to you because we're actually saying we want you to have a really good time with all of these conditions, but we don't want these conditions to be the reason that you're having a really good time. We want you to be having a really good time because you've decided to have a really good time. This is what you're looking for. You can be here in the midst of so many conditions that are pleasing. And you can be thinking about back home where it's not so pleasing. And you can be finding satisfaction even when you're sitting in the middle of really good conditions. There are people who complain no matter what. And there are people who find appreciation no matter what. And that's really the point that we're wanting you to find. We want you to just lean more toward that. Somebody said, my friends call me Pollyanna, and we say, she was happy. She was happy. What, did we get there? You want to talk more about it? Um, it's a big point. And I, I think it's just believing, it's, it's remembering that no, my no, relationship, no, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Well, uh, well, we just want to help you clean that up okay. because believing is the momentum of fast thoughts. A belief is just a thought that you keep thinking. We want you to be fresher in your thoughts, fresher in your thoughts. We want fewer beliefs to be entering in to the now equation of how you feel. How's that? That's why along with all of these wonderful conditions are new experiences and new people and new expectations too. Yes. Yes. So we have some questions for all of you, especially you. Okay. Does it seem like it would be simpler or easier for you to find a fresh, new, not often thought of, or maybe never even thought of, satisfying thought? Or does it feel easier to bring an old belief forward into satisfaction? A new one. Way easier. Yeah. So much easier. Yeah. And that's really the point that we're making so much easier. That's why new feels fresh. And it's why, especially the little ones are eager for the new experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think I thought I had to go clean all the old. We know stuff you up. did, but yeah. you don't. Since I have momentum of so many thoughts that keep coming forward, then it seems like I should clean them up. And we say, we know you think you should. We've written so many books with so many processes to help you clean that up. But it's so slow. It's so much easier to just find a higher vibration through meditation or through appreciation or through just getting up, just having gotten up, and then to acknowledge the fresh feeling of that satisfaction and then to consciously be aware that you have created a vibrational environment by choosing something that feels satisfying that will allow that vibration to grow from satisfaction to something more. And after a little while, the past really becomes irrelevant. It's like you just don't want to dig it up and tell those stories anymore. So many stories that were entertaining become less and less entertaining to you because while you may be entertaining others with them, you don't feel so good while you tell them. The one other thing is that I am really good at helping people clear blocks and when I use the processes that I use with other people for myself, they don't seem to work. Well, the reason is because the people you are helping who have blocks, you don't have those blocks. So I shouldn't expect. Unless it's a block that you're really relating to. You're already in a clear place. So since you're in a clear place, give us an example of helping someone clear a block. Well, I practice a method of um, hypnotherapy where someone comes in with a block, say they've got um, writer's block, right? They actually had a really awesome session with someone with writer's block. And then in the hypnosis, we go back to wherever that belief got created, like, oh, I can't have success because then I'll, you know, attention will be on me and that's actually terrifying. I want it, but I'm terrified of it kind of thing. And when they see that they created it, because it's always getting people clear on 
whatever we're experiencing, we're creating it. And it's like, oh, this is how I created it. And then they're free of that. And then, you know, I put in some new beliefs, like lining them up with what they want. It's like, oh, here's what's been in the way of that. And then now you've got a clear shot at what you want. But we want to find the pattern of the laws of the universe as we know them to be in order to explain what's happening. Mm -hmm. Because we are notoriously saying that going back, you can't get to the bottom of things. And you're saying that you're going back to where they believe that it began. Mm -hmm. So do you think you're going back to where it began? Or are you putting them in a non-resistant state of being where they can carve out for themselves a path of lesser resistance? Because what we've noticed about hypnosis or about past life regression, and we are not in any way contradicting your method. If it's working, then we say continue to utilize it and use the benefit from it. Mm -hmm. We just want everyone to understand it in the context of this greater conversation that we're having. Sometimes someone will say, as they'll have something that you're talking about or a past life regression I must have been raped in many life experiences what we want to say to them is we don't know if it's your past life you're getting or somebody else's but we know for sure it's a vibrational match to what you've got going on here and so as you're putting them into that sort of detached state with a desire activated because you all know what you're reaching for in that state of less resistance they are carving out a path of less resistance that sort of sets them free and it doesn't mean that you've gotten back to the heart of it it means you've in your less resistant state found a path of lesser resistance and does that hypnotic state does it last do you follow up with them do they continue to believe that or continue to know that so hypnosis for me occurs like what you just said, you're in a relaxed state. It like relaxes the nervous system. Well, it relaxes the vibration. It deactivates the beliefs that were keeping them from carving out that path. And when there's a deactivated belief, it's sort of like the dream state. Then it allows them to conjure the scenario that sets them free, which their own life experience will do as well. But the question that we're putting to you is, does it stick? Does that moment in time where they carve that out does that become their new belief or the moment they... in time of the session with me but afterward do they revert back to what they believed before not usually is the experience strong enough that they believe it and what i think gets and what i'm getting very clear on in this conversation is there's energy bound up that gets freed up and gets put towards what they're wanting. And the majority of the people that I work with, they move forward and they keep moving forward. That's a nice thing to assume. <laughs> I just, I, I maintain relations. Most of the people that I've worked with, I have. So then let's talk about why it doesn't work for you. Yes. What do you think is the difference? We'll tell you what it is. Okay, you, you say that. When you are, you, and you feel the resonance of it or yes. tell us if it's not there. Yeah. When you are working with another person and you are aware of what they're reaching for, you who are detached from the vibration that's resistant, that's holding them back, you are dominantly focused upon the desire that they hold. And so your inner being like, so to speak, you're holding the picture of what they want and then helping them to create an environment where they are releasing the resistance. And then you're like the mother bird calling them forward. It's just harder to do for yourself because when you're doing it for yourself, you're bound up in the belief. It's hard for almost anyone to be in the state of their desire and their state of their belief at the same time. That's why beliefs usually bridge more slowly. Yeah. That's exactly it. Is this a helpful conversation? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly really it. Really good. Yes. Thank you.